Bodyfanger 5 inch gauge Great Western Railway 14XX steam locomotive part 3 repairing a minor broken part and looking at the suspension problem. And before I go any further, please note this is not a King Scale or Silvercrest model locomotive. This engine was bought directly from the manufacturer in China. One viewer asked me why did I keep saying that at the beginning of the video. Well, that's because it's not a King Scale or Silvercrest locomotive. I spoke to the managing director of King Scale and told him what I was going to do. And we agreed that I would put a disclaimer on the front of the video just to show that this particular locomotive is not one of his company's products. The small fine detail on this engine is pretty good really. This is part of the vacuum braking system. It doesn't work, it's just for decoration, but it really makes the engine look good, but this one is broken off. It's made from a beautiful lost wax casting. The detail is incredibly good, really fine detail, but unfortunately the bracket that holds this dummy vacuum pipe to the main part of the buffer beam mounting has broken off because that is also scale and as the bracket at this scale is only 1 16th of an inch thick it's very weak. If it was made out of steel it would still be very weak and bend but cast brass doesn't bend very well and it just snapped off. The reason for this happening is as the engine was being lifted about by either Phil and myself from Black Gates or more likely when I carried the locomotive from my car into the workshop I may have damaged it then. Either way it's broken so I'm now mending it. The way I'm mending it is self-explanatory. This is a piece of brass angle and I'm going to silver solder this onto the existing part. So to hold the part in the correct position while I do silver solder it, I use the 1 copper rivet on one side of the casting and a 10BA nut and bolt on the other side. And here is the casting after I silver soldered it. And without the paint you can really see what a beautiful casting this is. I wouldn't like to make one of these. As you can see all the paint's gone with the heat of the silver soldering process and now with the help of a needle file and some emery cloth and some scotch brite I'm cleaning up the casting ready for painting. First of all I'll be spraying this part with etch primer to make sure that the paint sticks to it. I had a cursory glance at the big end bearings and for one moment in time I thought I really hope these are split bearings because I have seen things from China where the phosphor bronze bearing is just a tube threaded onto the crank pin before the crankshaft is assembled. And although this crankshaft was probably originally assembled with grub screws and found to be inadequate, the crankshaft now on this engine, as well as the grub screws, is welded together. So most of this morning I was thinking of the best way to remove these type of bearings if they were not split. But thankfully they are split. If you watch this clip you'll notice how very quickly I rotate the bearing to look for the split and there it is. That was a relief. It looks very much like a phosphor bronze bush to me and it's split which is a good thing. So I'm going to put the bolts back in and tighten everything up. One minor problem though. When I took these bolts out originally there were lock nuts on the other side of them and getting at the lock nut on this side, the side that's visible, is quite easy. But getting to the lock nut at the other side which is not visible is almost impossible. Because of the close proximity of the bolt to the body of the connecting rod, there's not enough clearance to use a socket. That would be difficult enough in itself. And in the same way, you can just about get a spanner in, but there's no room to rotate the spanner. Believe me, I didn't show it on the video, but I did try, and it really is incredibly difficult, and it makes the job not fun at all, and makes it take far too long. It was a very tedious job, and really quite boring. Today, for once, the weather was quite good. It wasn't too cold, nice and sunny, nice and bright. So I had the workshop door open, which makes a change. And a mouse came into the workshop, took one look at what I was doing and threw itself on the trap. And any time soon, I expect the rest of the mouse's family to come in and do the same, because this job is even more boring. It's not tedious, there's a difference. Some jobs are tedious, almost impossible to do, and other jobs are just a bit boring. The suspension is too tightly adjusted, and when I see this, I think, hmm, I wonder if there's a problem. When the engine is sat on the rails, the trailing wheels don't even touch the track. And when I press down on the back of the locomotive, then the trailing wheels touch the track. But the front wheel starts to lift off the track, so it's seesawing on this centre wheel. Something has to be done about this. So I dismantled every one of the studs, all eight of them. Then I fitted lock nuts to one end of the studs, 
Then I applied retainer, very similar to Loctite, but not actually Loctite, to the studs. And by using the socket on the top lock nut, I tightened the studs into position in the axle box. I put everything back together on one of the axles, and the suspension felt a lot better. There was at least some movement. But I wasn't happy with the amount of pressure that the nuts were putting on the keeper plates. Even with these locking washers fitted, I do think they would have vibrated loose, so I'm going to use some modern technology. I'm going to use nylock locking nuts. These are 4mm nylock locking nuts and they're perfect for the job. These are not going to work loose. I keep most of my workshop stock of nuts and bolts in a load of small plastic drawers in a metal cabinet that screws to the wall. And actually, I have two of these, one I've had for many years, and the other one I inherited when my father died. My father was into woodwork and he kept wood screws in his cabinet. And today when I reached up to get my stock of 4mm nuts and bolts from the little plastic drawer in my father's old cabinet, I caught it on the metal part of the cabinet and the whole lot fell onto the bench. And I could hear the words of my father very clear in my head. He used to say, if you want to learn patience, tip at a box of nuts and bolts all over the floor and pick them up and then you'll realise what patience is. And he was right. And it happened just at the right time because I was getting quite fed up of doing this job. So were the mice who at this time were throwing themselves onto the traps two at a time. Something interesting now. When you build and run miniature locomotives it's very important to make sure that you get maximum adhesion. After all, they're only really small things relative to the large human loads behind them. And the best way I've found to do this is to use a piece of hardwood like this and just jack up the wheel with it. If the locomotive's on a track, you can't get a piece of hardwood underneath it so a screwdriver blade will suffice. And what this indicates is the amount of weight that's been put down onto the track from each of the wheels. Now this is an 042, which means that it has no leading wheels, it has four driving wheels and two trailing wheels. So for instance, an 060 would have no wheels at the front, six driving wheels and no wheels at the back, and so on and so forth. The point of the exercise is to find out which wheel is not doing its job. If one of the wheels lifts very easily, the spring tension of that particular wheel needs to be adjusted so that it applies more weight to the track. And I found this to be the best way to indicate how much weight's been put down on the track. There are some fancy wane scale things you can get, but I've never seen any of those. I just use a screwdriver, it's a lot cheaper, and it seems to work for me. The engine seems to be running a little bit smoother. I received a nice email today from the wife of one of my viewers who lives in Germany, and this lady said that her husband watched my videos quite frequently. She then went on to say that it's his birthday tomorrow, which is the 27th of March, I want to give him a mention. So, to you, Phil, have a good birthday. Happy birthday. I had a look on your YouTube channel, and I really did like the videos of the Aster 9F running on that railway. Those Aster engines are real things of beauty. And for anyone who doesn't know what an Aster engine is, spelt A-S-T-E-R, they're very small, but very beautiful, and very highly detailed steam locomotives. So, once again, happy birthday, Phil. Have a good one. While I've been talking about Aster steam locomotives, looking at my steam locomotive, there's still a problem with the suspension. Something is now knocking when I press down on the engine to simulate it having water in it. And for starters, I'm going to remove these strange brass pieces at the top of the coupling rods. But that's about it for this episode, I think. Here's the repaired part for the front, the vacuum braking system, and you can't really tell it's ever been broken, and it's a lot stronger than it was to start with. I'll just stop talking now and let the video run out on its own, just with the engine running. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.